It's easy to think of weightlifting as a purely physical endeavor, but it's at least as much mental. And I want to, in this video, talk about some of the components of that that I've found most rewarding over the last few years of doing it. This all started for me, really, when I had a back injury that, according to a few different professionals, was bad enough to mean that I supposedly couldn't lift weights again. And for a while, I believed them. But eventually, I saw that these barriers that I had been told about were largely mental rather than physical ones, and I could either accept them or push through them. And that is a message that I've found best expressed by Doug Young, who broke his rib early on in the World Powerlifting Championship, but continued lifting and came away with the win. Your body is capable of so much more than your mind is capable of. Uh, in my opinion, the mind is nothing but a breaker fuse for just like uh, electricity. Uh, when your body gets more than it can take, your mind shuts it off and will not let you extend yourself any further. And a uh, weightlifter, in my opinion, to lift the type of weights I lift, you must learn to discipline your mind in conjunction with your body. And so, having disciplined his mind and his body, Doug Young has somehow found the strength and the courage to return to the stage once again. Terry, it's an incredible story. Yeah, this is it. If he can make this lift, he'll win the world championships again. I don't know if he'll do it. This is going to tell the tale. 711 pounds is all he needs. If he makes this lift, he'll win. Larry! He's calling out to Larry. Larry Pacifico points up the finger number one and taps his chest. Yeah. Yes, indeed. He thinks he can win. I'll tell you, in my book, even if he doesn't make the weight, he is. For doing what he has done Doug after Young all that has and all the pain, here is Doug Young five. approaching the deadlift bar, set at 711 pounds. If he makes it, he will be heavyweight champ. Yeah, he's going to pay the price for this one, I know. The question in my mind is whether he's going to be able to pull it without hurting so bad that he has to drop the bar or without passing out because of this terrific loss of weight. He's got it, though. Look at that. He's got it. He got it. Got it. Young, 711 yes, pounds, and he is in agony, but indeed he is the heavyweight Watch champion. What an incredible success story Doug Young is. Now, I'm no Doug Young. I'm not even that strong. I've actually come last in a powerlifting competition before, but I have learned to appreciate how physical toughness and mental toughness are developed in conjunction. I'd go so far as to say even that there's an element of spiritual toughness here. Psalm 18, 34, He teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Most men have a natural desire to be strong. And if you look in mythology, Hercules, or in the Bible with Samson, it's a masculine archetype. Now, it's also good for women to be strong, but no one's going to see it as a lack of a feminine perfection if women happen to be weak, whereas a weak man is normally ashamed. One reason for this is on a deep level, it's about honoring our DNA and our ancestors. Winston Churchill said that we have not journeyed all this way across the centuries, across the oceans, across the mountains, across the prairies, because we are made of sugar candy. You're capable of more than modern life demands of you. You know this deep down. One thing that lifting can help you to do is to seek excellence. It's easy to do. The iron is all calculated in small increments. Just add a bit more next week. Add another rep. Take a month to do it. Take a year to do it. But the barometer of progress is there. Who are you to say for sure that you've achieved all you possibly can? But the journey is going to be long and there'll be plenty of setbacks. Sometimes it will feel like you've stalled for years, but you keep going because you're patient. And this will help you develop perseverance as well. 
the workouts will get arduous and feel genuinely taxing at times, but getting through them will also help you to get through other aspects of your life that are similarly challenging. Delayed gratification and being willing and able to await the good of the goal you're aiming at is an incredibly important skill to cultivate. And you'll learn in the process that there's no success without sacrifice and the willingness to suffer or what in old fashioned terms is called mortification is necessary. You might even have to learn to enjoy the process because otherwise how are you going to keep showing up long enough consistently enough to get results? It's also a good opportunity to learn to control fear because you will feel fear. When you're a kid and you read storybooks about heroes and dragons, sometimes you get the sad feeling that there are no dragons left to fight. But in the gym you can call forth bigger and bigger ones to suit your growing abilities. And there's always one big enough to scare you. Now there's nothing macho about this. This isn't about being fearless. An appropriate amount of fear is what the aim is. It's about showing respect. And in fact, excessive aggressiveness without reasonable fear is something that you'll quickly learn can get you hurt. So too is thinking that you can lift something that you can't. You can't aim at something which is beyond you. And this is one reason why competition can be good, because it teaches you humility. It shows you there's no point in striving for honor above your own level of excellence. But it also helps you to seek honor, seek achievement in a genuinely worthwhile arena. Spinoza's saying that all things excellent are as difficult as they are rare is an inspiring one. Why would you want to do something easy and insufficiently challenging for you? Just as striving for something totally beyond you, picking an inappropriate goal, is a mistake, so too is not pushing yourself hard enough. And you can learn to find that balance. And genuinely striving for excellence is going to mean putting aside pleasure to engage in arduous activity. And that's true outside of the gym as well. Many people find that this transforms not just their physical lives, but also their mental lives as well. And that the lessons transfer into relationships and into business. It's probably especially important today in the safe space atmosphere when you might never feel afraid or come to know what your limits are. But the experience of surpassing boundaries that you thought couldn't be surpassed is a great way to build confidence for yourself. There are few better feelings than taking a weight that used to be an intimidating weight for one rep and doing it for an easy set of multiple reps and realizing that that was you. That was your potential that you've worked hard to achieve. Now the last point is one I don't hear mentioned often, but I think is really important. There's a saying, beware the man of only one book. And training can also teach you some intellectual humility as well, because you'll realize that there are lots of different ways to make progress, many different systems, and it involves fine tuning, trial and error, experimenting and open-mindedness. Most of these clips have been of the power lifts, squat, bench, deadlift, but it's important to keep some variety in your training. This is where enjoyment comes in. Things like chin-ups, for example, moving your own body weight, help you to enjoy workouts in a way that just lifting heavy barbells doesn't. And to be successful, you have to be in it for the long game. So that's why it's important sometimes to spice things up a bit. 
you should be looking forward to workouts for the novelty factor, cycling different exercises in and out of your programs. Another great way to make sure this is enjoyable is to teach people, especially your kids. Now I think it would be insane to put children on programs. Instead, just let them come in the gym, smell the chalk, feel the metal, see you lift, and let them enjoy following. Let them enjoy doing likewise. If they don't want to do it, don't make them. At least not until they're older, and you can tell it's just laziness. But you should be cultivating their natural curiosity. There will come a point where you've lifted the heaviest weight you're ever going to lift. You've made all the progress that you're going to make, and it's downhill from there. So what do you do? Now I want to use a clip from an underrated film, The Grey, to make some points here. The main character, John, was on a plane that crashed in the Alaskan wilderness. And along with all the other passengers, he's been hunted by a wolf pack as he's been trying to make his way to safety. They've picked off everyone else one by one. He's the last man left alive. And then he finds himself having journeyed right into the middle of their den. And he realizes that there's no way out. His wife has died. All his friends are gone. And he has to decide how he's going to die. Now this encounter with the wolf is really about a metaphor for encountering death. Ultimately, we're all made of flesh and life will get its teeth into us in one way or another, sooner or later. And all we can do is decide how we're going to respond. Thank <laughs> you.